Welcome to the Parkinson's Project podcast. The Parkinson's Project seeks to erase the stigma associated with Parkinson's disease while empowering and inspiring those dealing with the affliction to live life to the fullest. The Parkinson's Project aspires to build an engaged, supportive community while examining the journey of living with Parkinson's disease through a positive, empowering perspective. Here is your host of the Parkinson's Project podcast, Tim McNiff. Hi once again, everybody. Tim McNiff welcoming you back to the Parkinson's Project podcast, episode 30, if you're keeping score at home, and I hope you are. At the Parkinson's Project, what we do is we seek to engage with people who are working to find a cure, to help others live their best life, or of course, create a better path for themselves or for someone that they love. Our intent is to deliver tangible, beneficial content with the goal being, of course, to put ourselves out of business when there is no longer a need to talk about PD. And with that, it is my great pleasure to welcome educator, speaker, and service dog advocate. Whoops, I almost hit the wrong button and ended this uh, recording prematurely. There's a little full disclosure for you. Uh, Marty Lukashevsky joining us. Marty, I almost put this thing to sleep before you ever even got to say a word. Thank you for joining us. Not a problem. And hopefully I don't put anyone to sleep watching or listening to this to this podcast. It's my job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I for whatever reason I needed to hit the uh, to add you to the stream and I started to go up to end recording. I'm like, oh my gosh, I was one button click away from uh, from ending this thing. Marty, thank you so much for joining us. Um, first of all, and and it doesn't seem right that we're only talking about you or showing you because this is not all about you. This episode is focused on your journey with Parkinson's disease, yes, but also about a couple special relationships in your life with your partners who have been with you in this journey, one of them step for step, the other one ever since they got here. I speak first about your lovely wife, Jean, and your other partner in this journey, and that is your service dog, Laverne. And that's the focus of this episode. Um, for those of you who follow us know that we had Jeff Johnson from Can Do Canines on in October, and he made us aware of the organization. And then um, through conversations with Karn Hansen and other people at Can Do Canines, they mentioned mm -hmm. you and talked about you. And I reached out and, and, and here you are. So thank you for joining us. And first of all, let's start with you, your life uh, leading up to your diagnosis. Tell us about Marty Lukashevsky. In, oh, in, in in relatively uh, brief uh, terms, the <laughs> overview. Uh, give you a quick overview. I was an athlete in high school. Uh, decided to uh, forego going college right away and got into the food service industry. Actually had made a quick stop here in Minnesota. Lived in Indiana for over 50 years. Uh, I had... Uh, uh, basically went to high school across the street where they have a football team uh, that wears blue and gold and just had a lot of these team, you know, events in my life. And that's what having a service dog has been for me is being part of a team, you know, a marriage, you're part of a team. Uh, I moved to Minnesota a little over 10 years ago. I had met my wife earlier online and we, uh, ended up getting married, and sadly or happily, seven months after we were married, I received my diagnosis of Parkinson's. But we knew it had been there uh, for quite some time uh, since I had first gone into education. And uh, the uh, diagnosis was early onset Parkinson's disease. So, um, just like uh, a lot of previous guests have talked about how it's a snowflake, how it affects everyone so differently. Yeah, I get some tremors, uh, but I get the stiffness. I got curling of the toes. I get the freezing. And uh, uh, the freezing and loss of balance is what uh, directed me into uh, looking for a service dog. How far into your journey are you? What year are we talking about your diagnosis, Marty? Since diagnosis is nine years. Uh, going into my 10th now, um, this past week, I had uh, the uh, anniversary of the diagnosis. Um, but uh, 
the doctors have been able to look far enough in my medical history that uh, signs appeared as far back as 97, 98. I mean, wow. I was I was asked uh, by my then principal, uh, why are you coming to school drunk? I'm like, what do you mean? She says, you can't walk a straight line. You know, and I would have every now and then I'd have tremors in my legs, you know, have them in my left arm. And at that time, they said, oh, it's essential tremor. It's all in your head. You're too young to have Parkinson's. Mm. And uh, uh Eventually, and because I was very athletic, you know, uh, since being a kid, uh, I was still running. I was preparing for the Medtronic 10K in, in Minneapolis, St. Paul. And I had an a injury during training. And within three months, I went from running a 10K to uh, sitting in a wheelchair because I couldn't walk. I was shuffling my feet all the time. And that's what started us on the journey for the the true diagnosis. You said a few minutes ago, when you were talking about the the timeline, sadly or happily, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's. I'm paraphrasing here, but that's roughly what mm-hmm. you said. Explain that, yeah. sadly or happily. Yeah, because I, I believe it's a gift from God. You know, I am a, a, a person with a deep faith, and I believe that... Uh, you're not going to be given something that you cannot uh, cannot face and get through. Uh, the, the tools are going to be there for you. Part of that is the faith. The other thing, the tools being provided, the tools, I don't know, you know, nine, 10 years ago that I would have a service dog today. She, yeah, I don't want to call her a tool, but she is a tool. She helps me to live my day fully. And since that diagnosis, I have probably lived a more fuller, more richer life than before uh, the diagnosis. Uh, so for me, I, I look at it as happily, you know, uh, I'm able to see things different. It's part of one of the talks that I, I give to people called Smile. Uh, see majesty in life every day. After, after a knee surgery that I had, my wife and I and, and the boys, uh, we went up to, up north and we were walking to the Devil's Kettle. And if anyone is familiar with the Devil's sure. Kettle in northern Minnesota, 175 steps up, 175 steps down. And that is a lot, especially when you're four months post knee replacement. And I still did it, but I didn't do it at at a fast pace. I did it at a slower pace. And as I'm walking and I'm sitting there and I look to my right and there's this forest filled with down trees and the green moss is covering them. And it's like an emerald city. And I'm going, wow. And my wife's like, why don't you hurry up? You know, we got to get to the kettle. I mean, the kids made it there and we're back and I had to give them the keys to the car. So they had dipped their toes in the water in October and they needed to warm up. And I'm like, no, look at this. And I took her head in my hands and I focused her to where I was looking. And she went, wow. wow. And I'm like, that's a gift. I'm, I'm taking that day and I'm smelling the flowers. I'm smelling the coffee. You know, I'm getting to appreciate the life. That previously I was just all over the place running through. Like the and rest so of why us. Why not? Yep, like the yeah. rest of us. Why not be happy what? about that? Right. You mm-hmm. mentioned uh, both of them, uh, Laverne and and Jean, your your service dog mm-hmm. and your wife in that order. Um, Jean was not always on board with the idea of a service dog, was she? No, no, she was. And I mean, for her, when I originally brought the idea, she thought she was giving in or that we were giving in and letting the disease take over. And that's the one item that I hear a lot when I've talked to others with Parkinson's is that they are so worried about the disease taking over. And I've always tried to look at life in a proactive way and say, what can I do to make my life better? So what can I do with Parkinson's to make living with Parkinson's better. I mean, I, I might have Parkinson's, but Parkinson's is not going to have me. 
And so what does that mean? Well, I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm going through boxing classes because I need the exercise. You know, I take those walks. You know, we look at different utilities and tools around the house uh, to make us have a better life. You know, when we remodeled the kitchen, it wasn't pull handles. It was drawers that we could tie a rope to to pull and open that drawer and make it easier. So what could we do to make life better? And part of that was, uh, you know, looking at items such as a service dog. And it was the best move that we ever made. She even will agree with me to this day. But it took her about a year to overcome that. But when she finally did, and we had Laverne in the in our home, when she finally came to the home, and our our handler at Can Do Canines uh, said to my wife, she says, guess what? My wife goes, what? She says, you can stop being the service dog now. My wife was doing the things that Laverne does for me. She was helping me maintain the balance. She was nudging me when we were together and I would freeze. She was picking up items that I would drop. And these are all items that Laverne can do for me. And so now, not only has it given me the independence and the freedom and the liberty to live that full life each day, it's done the same thing for my wife. And I couldn't be be more happy. So let's get on to Laverne. Yeah. How long have you had her? How close have you become? Well, February 20th of 2023 will mark six years that I've had her living in my life. Prior to that, we had started some training. Um, I think maybe five or six times I have left her at home for uh, circumstances beyond our control, uh, where, where she remained in her in her kennel in the house. She is with me 24-7. Uh, she sleeps uh, down on the floor below where I, I sleep. Uh, when I s- sit up in bed, she walk, walks right over to my nightstand and I have my medications in a vinyl lunch bag. And she grabs that lunch bag and brings it to me. And even right now, she's no more than five feet away from me. I mean, she's got that focus at all times. And, and you know, if I need something, you know, uh, you know, she's there for me. She's even my jokester in chief, too. I mean, When we would go into, you know, being a virtual teacher, I can teach from home just about every day. And every now and then we have to go in for meetings to our office. Well, I'd be one of the first ones there. And we trained with Laverne. If I need help, she knew exactly who to go to. And when you have an office that's a city block wide, And, you know, depending on where you're at in the office, she knew who to go to. Well, every now and then, they didn't know we were training, but I would release Laverne and I'd tell her to go see my friend Jill. And Jill's sitting in our office section and she'd go up to Jill and Jill would be like, oh, Laverne, Laverne. And then about five minutes later, she'd realize I wasn't there and she's like, oh my gosh, we got to go help your dad. You know, so we would play that practical joke on Jill and I'd be sitting there, you know, out in the hallway, just laughing with my arms folded going, okay, thanks. Thanks, Laverne. You're a good jokester too. So she kept up the act. Maybe not so funny for Jill though. She thinks you're having a medical emergency. (laughs) I know, but that when you have friendships that you can, you can do that with your friends. Um, You know, you know, Jill better than I do, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And, and once again, it's back living that normal life. That's right. That's right. She's she's giving you that back. So yeah. when when Jeff Johnson was on, and and mm-hmm. love that episode. It was it's just fun getting educated. As when when I had done my my former life working in news, we had done can can do Canaan is doing this or they're having that. But I I never found any out anything about can do canines, and so getting educated was very interesting to me. And one of the things Jeff said was. Our people don't pick our dogs. 
our dogs pick their human. Can you personalize that statement for us? Yeah, my wife is allergic to dog dander. So we need to have uh, a dog. If we're going to have a service dog at the time, we said we need to have one that's going to cause, not cause my wife's allergies to flare up. We had two miniature schnauzers. They don't, you know, cause the allergy to flare up. And so a poodle would be the, the, the best thing for us. So Leslie, who was our handler at the time, said, well, I'm going to bring a dog over. And Gene, I want you to rub your face into, you know, the dog's, you know, uh, curly hair and, and see what happens. See if, you know, this will work. Well, Leslie shows up with Laverne. My wife opens the door after they had uh, rang the doorbell. And I'm at the back end of the, of the entranceway. And my wife opens the door. Leslie cannot even let the leash loose fast enough. Laverne beelined right down the entranceway all the way up to me and just started nuzzling me. And Leslie says, this is your dog. You know, she couldn't say it, you know, and, and confirm it. She says, you guys got a bond. And, she, and Laverne that night would not want to leave my site, even though it was for my wife's benefit to see if the, there was going to be any type of allergy. Uh, there, Marty, what do you know about this? Why would, why would Laverne have reacted that way? But is it because she can sense this about you? And she's been trained that way. She has, and, and Jeff mentioned this, you know, the last few months of training for, for a service dog, their abilities have been showing what are they good at over the course of time. So like black labs are like rocks. They are not going to move. And so that, that talent lends itself to being a good autism assist dog. Well, you know, Poodles were originally used for hunting purposes. And here, you know, she has this sensory, this sense nose uh, that is phenomenal. And it has been uh, reported and confirmed that Parkinson's patients do uh, give off a different scent. You know, there was news a couple of years ago about this woman in England who could, you know, start sniffing and she could tell you who the Parkinson's patient was in the room, you know, uh, but dogs, it's a thousand times better, that sensory of smell. And she knew I was the odd one uh, in the, in the room. I mean, everyone knows I'm the odd one in the room, but I mean, she picked up that I was the one with Parkinson. So, uh, but she came right to me and she senses things like that. Even through today, if I'm going to have a bad day, I don't know about it for two or three hours unless Laverne has told me. Uh, I was in church one day and, and claustrophobia. I mean, I used to love being in big places with lots of people. And she came right up to my legs and lay down in my legs in a pew in church because I was having, I was starting to show those signs of that claustrophobic anxiety. And she's like, sort of like, hey, it's going to be okay, daddy. It's going to be okay, you know. She'll do that. And hours later, here I am. I'm my tremors and the dyskinesia is just taken over and I can't control my arms. And one of them wants to, you know, go behind my back. The other one wants to keep on going up in the air, you know. She knew it hours ahead. And I I can't explain it. I hope science can explain it, but I'm thankful because it allows us to prepare. Yeah, it allows us to prepare for that. Mm. So speaking for myself, no, no um, science behind this. And maybe I'm putting my own emotions on this. So forgive me if I am. Mm-hmm. But I think sometimes people see the red cape on a service dog and they feel sorry for the animal. Like the animal is not living its best life. What do people need to know about service dogs and follow up? How would you hope that they would behave around service dogs? Well, let me let me start with the back half of that question first. Okay. okay. How should they behave around service dogs? How should they behave around you? 
How should they behave around their family? Be normal. The service dog is nothing different. The service dog is just a part of that person's family. Okay, okay but can I stop you there for a second? Because yeah. so, so, you know, my, my natural reaction would be if I walked in the room and I saw the dog, I would bend over or lower myself more to the dog's level mm -hmm. and try to say, hey, how mm -hmm. are you? Who was this? You know, and make an interaction. Should I do that with a service dog who's working? No. Would, would you, as you're driving down the street, see a person crossing the street and speed up to hit them? <laughs> I mean, it's it's an exaggerated you know. statement, but that's what people are doing when they come in and they start to talk to that dog and they bring down, oh my goodness, you're such a good puppy. You know, what that does is it breaks that focus that the service dog has. And the service dogs that typically when a service dog is serving someone, they are amongst the best of the best of that breed. They have been bred, and I'm not saying to be a service dog. Dogs have been bred to have certain talents. And those talents show up, and they want to use it. It's, it's hereditary. It's innate in Laverne and in our other dogs to assist that person. Uh, if you've had the opportunity, and I'm speaking to the audience because I know, Tim, you've been able to see this, More Ways to Serve was a feature that was done on the animal planet uh, back in 2022, which we were a part of. And there was an, another service dog team where the client has an issue with hy hypoglycemic awareness, does not know when that sugar levels are dropping. And the dog literally has saved her life over and over again by just warning her, hey, your sugar's dropping. You're Here losing control of your sugar. Here it comes so that we can do that. Boy, you talk about how happy that dog is when they're able to do it. Uh, I'll never forget the first week I had Laverne and I dropped my wallet. And if I would have bent over and picked it up right away because, hey, you know, somebody's going to take my wallet, That's right? Reaction. Right. I, she grabbed it and gave it to me. A week later, I dropped my credit card and she grabbed it and gave it to me. I told her, you know, get it. She got it. You know, a credit card on a concrete, and this was in a big box hardware store, on that concrete floor. That's difficult for a human. Yet she picked it up and she looked at me and she just gave me this big old smile. Hey, check out what I just did for you. I mean, that's what gave, gave them that happiness. And so if they can use those abilities they were born with, that they were bred to do, uh, that, that dog is so much happier. So, so bottom line is th that's what makes them happy is serving the person that they're with. And huh. for idiots like me, you see the red cape on the dog, leave the freaking dog alone. Yeah. Red cape, blue cape, because there's a lot of organizations that train okay. dogs, um, you know, and they all have their own colors. Red is a, a pretty predominant. But if you see a cape on an animal, and not all not all service dogs wear capes, you know, uh, it is not a requirement to wear a cape identifying themselves as a service dog, even though these scams and the different orders. Oh, you know, you need to register your service dog. No, you don't. You know, uh, the Cape is a telltale sign and it's usually a sign that they have been trained properly and they are usually coming from an accredited organization because there are standards that, that the dogs have to meet before, you know, Laverne and I were certified as a team with can do canines. We had to go through training uh, with each other and then have a public display that she knew those talents and I knew how to work those talents with her. Okay. So funny. I, I write down people see why are you always looking down my wife. They'll say, well, I'm writing down notes so I can do this for sound bites. But the whole thing on Laverne and the service talk, I didn't write down one. I sat there and listened to you the whole time. So I've got to go back and, and do some work. You, you got me on that one. We have about five minutes mm -hmm. left, Marty. My goal is always mm -hmm. to keep these under 30 minutes if I can. I just really want people mm -hmm. to be, uh, we respect you, your time that you give to us. Mm -hmm. So um, you just mentioned it. You were part of a lovely story on Animal Planet 
that looks at how can do canines develop service dogs. You said to me, I come in in about six and a half minutes, but you really should watch the whole thing. And I will just pass that same message along to everyone who is engaging with this. You really should go and watch that whole thing. It really explains can do canines in a way that we, we really can't do it here. How do people find that video from Animal Planet, Marty? Well, I usually tell the people I run across uh, to go to the can do canines dot org website and in there you can do a search and i tell them just to do a search for animal planet uh there are two stories on the can do canine website where they can you know click either one of those two and it'll have the link in it if you happen to subscribe to the discovery channel uh discovery plus where you can go into animal planet it's under puppy bowl and i think it was puppy bowl 18 uh, the one that occurred in 2022, they have a listing of different little side stories of which we were one of those side stories that went with the puppy bowl. So that it's, would be the other way great. to look at it. Yeah, it's great. And you can see Laverne and you can see, and I think if people are listening to Marty talk about, um, so Marty described himself to me as he said, I'm built like an offensive lineman. And mm -hmm. and Laverne, you said poodle. I think we all tend to think of poodle as being small. Laverne is not. She is a no. sturdy dog and, and she's built for this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of condensing now so we can get to the last two items I, I want to make sure we hit. You have a website, martyandgeneluke.com. Uh, it's broken down into yep. seven sections. You have four health. Can do just for kids marketplace our life press room and silver linings again. That's Marty mm -hmm. and Jean Luke dot com. You are a speaker besides being an educator. Mm -hmm. If someone wanted to to contact you to come and have you speak for them, how do they find you? Uh, they can just go ahead and send us uh, an email, Marty and Jean Luke at gmail dot com. Uh, we're revamping our, our website here in the future. We'll also have a, a link there. Uh, and there is a link there today that I can make certain and it'll be in marketplaces where it will be. So. Marketplace and, and you're at Marty and Jean mm -hmm. Now our yeah. goal here at the Parkinson's project podcast is to always give our viewers slash listeners something for the time that they give us. So we want to have a call to action something that they can do right now to take a step forward in their uh, journey against PD. Uh, what would be your call to action today, Marty? Education. I think uh, learning as much as you can about service dogs, whether you are a Parkinson's patient or not. Uh, service dogs are there to help many of us with uh, assistance needs. I mean, if you go and you break your leg, you go to the emergency room, they reset it, they give you a set of crutches, right? Service dogs are like those crutches. It's something that will assist us while we are re recovering if it was a broken leg. Well, Parkinson patients, we don't recover. We digress, okay? So the service dog is there to assist us. So if you're uh, a fellow Parky, I would encourage you to take a look at 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 a service dog, what it can do for your life. For the lay public, understand that the service dog is there to assist us. Uh, we we do have a need. Sometimes you don't see that need. You know, like a, a person with diabetes, you don't see that need. I, when I have a great day and my meds are working, what, you got Parkinson's? You know, uh, but yet if I bent over and reached something, you know, for something I just dropped, boom. I'm passed out. I'm on the floor. I've hurt myself and who knows who, who else. So under, understand that, that that service dog is fulfilling a need that that person has and just treat that person like you would treat any, any person, you know, you're having a conversation want, with them, not with the dog. You know? Right. Right. And I want to close with this. If someone mm -hmm. has PD and they have never considered a service dog and what it might bring to their life and they're just sort of had the light bulb go on as a result of this conversation uh, and your experience with Laverne, what would you have them do to better educate themselves about that experience? What would be their first step? Do the search, do the search for the organizations. There, there are plenty out there. You want to make certain uh, an organization that is going to be providing a service dog uh, has some form of accreditation. Uh, if they do not have the accreditation, uh, more than likely you may be falling into a scam. You got to be buyer beware on that. Uh, 
Um, it's one of the reasons why I chose Candu Canines because they had the accreditation. I knew that the dogs were going to be trained in a certain way, that they were going to be healthy, that this wasn't a, a, a quick way to, to get my money. Most service dogs organizations will uh, either gift the dog or for a smaller fee, provide the dog for you. There are some organizations that will be free of charge. And do canines just charges a, a little registration fee um, that's non-refundable, 50 bucks, no big deal. Uh, other organizations I know, two or 3,000 to help defray the expenses of that service dog. Service dogs now will cost anywhere from 40 to $50,000 if you consider the training and the food and the vet bills from birth all the way to the time they're matched with, with their humans. So uh, those organizations that are in it to serve others, uh, it's going to appear and you, you're going to see that information when you do your research. And, and that's what I would ask that everyone does. And not only Parkinson's patients, uh, a lot of these organizations, they need assistance. You might not be able to have a dog in the place that you live, but you can go to that organization and walk dogs for them. It's a way to assist and, and help us out. Uh, this, this podcast, uh, Tim, is great because it's one way you've been able to serve us at Can Do Canines by getting the word out about what great things these dogs do. So I want to say thank you for that. Well, thank you for your time today, not only for joining us, but for making us better aware of the role that service dogs uh, play and can play in a person's uh, PD journey. Um, this has been great. I, I hope you're not a stranger either to me or, or to the podcast. I wish you nothing but the best in 2023. And I really encourage people to to go and, and, and uh, look at the story on Animal Planet. Um, Marty gave me a link, and I think you can find that right at Can Do Canines. Easy enough. It's a it's a wonderful story, and, and you're 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 great for sharing that with us, and and much appreciated. And wish you and Laverne nothing but the best in twenty. And of course, Gene, you know, Gene's yeah. the poor afterthought in the story, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in twenty twenty three and going forward, Marty. Mm -hmm. Why, well, well, thank you, Tim, and uh, I'll even post the link for the video at martyandgeneluke.com as well. We'll put it in there too. I, I, I of course, won't do that because I'm the one who almost stopped this recording before it almost started. It'll be someone who actually knows what they're doing with tech. All right, Marty, hang around. I'll be right back with you. Okay. Uh, the Parkinson's Project seeks to be a place where you can come for a range of information about PD and to find support for yourselves or perhaps someone you love in your life. We encourage you to check us out on Facebook at the Parkinson's Project. You can find the Parkinson's Project podcast wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Check us out and please rate us so that we can continue to grow and give support in the ongoing effort to eradicate this affliction and put ourselves out of business. This has been the Parkinson's Project podcast. For executive producer Pat Forcia, I'm Tim McNiff. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And we look forward to meeting and working with all of you as we seek to build a loving, supportive, and empowering community through all aspects of the Parkinson's Project. See you soon, everybody. Thank you for engaging with the Parkinson's Project podcast. Be sure to look for more content on the Parkinson's Project Facebook page. And we'll see you right here on the next edition of the Parkinson's Project Podcast.